The way I like to think about balance sheet adjustments. Sorry for my is by thinking about your uses and sources, right? Uses and sources help determine where cash is going and coming from outside of the entity, right? Outside of the transaction. And like we learned on Monday, that cash in a projected model drives the balance sheet. Where cash is sourced, where it's coming from, and where it's being used, will also drive our balance sheet adjustments. So this is a great way to think about, so again, you don't have to memorize all the different types of adjustments you use in the balance sheet. Um, so when thinking about how to make your balance sheet adjustments, I'd like to think about, I'd like you to think about how, to, how, how do these uses and sources line items, how are they interpreted in a balance sheet? So for example, debt is clearly long-term debt. On a balance sheet, right? Equity is probably stuck on a balance sheet, right? How would you think about purchase price? What is what could the purchase price represent? Nope. Goodwill and amortization. It includes goodwill and amortization. What else? Who said that? Yeah. The equity value of the target. The equity value of the target. The purchase price in balance sheet terms represents the book value of the target business at a premium. <coughs> right? So the balance sheet line items that make up the purchase price is target book value, plus goodwill, plus intangible assets, if any. Right? That makes up the purchase price. What you're paying for is the target book value at a premium. That premium gets divided into goodwill and intangible assets. Right? It's important to understand that. <clears throat> How about net debt? What does net debt represent on a balance sheet? Short term debt, long term debt. Yeah. Target. Short term debt. Target long term debt. Other. Target cash. What would be an example of other debt? What would be an example of anything that's not short term or long term debt? Any type of other, there's a, a multitude of subordinate debts, mezzanine funding, convertible bonds. Well, mezzanine is usually a year, right? <laughs> or could, no. could be longer. Could be longer. But short term debt, anything that's Oh, no, no, no. Anything that's current debt is one year or less, right? Yes. And it's so current. Short, short term debt is, is year to date? Mm. Yeah. Short term debt would, would be owed back within a year. Less than a year. So, say mezzanine debt is a three, a three year problem. That's not long term debt? That would be long term. Right. That would be long term. So, they, all debt's going to fall into one of the two, right? For the most part? Uh. That's why before I said revolving debt because if it's like no because no because mezzanine since it's a convertible right. that's other uh, that's other okay. long term debt because it's a hybrid you it's a hybrid between debt and equity we'll get okay. to that when we get to okay. LBOs okay so what about so yes uh, with debt even if there aren't uh, like legal clauses that make you pay off since the debt is part of the book value and that ultimately part of the purchase price would you off instantly anyway? No, you could just assume it. You can absorb it. You can just move it onto your balance sheet if you want to. <clears throat> and then you wouldn't have to pay it off. And it, it, and it, would, be, be, and it would be under sources in, in, in terms of existing debt, right? Uh, new, new no. debt and existing debt? No, it wouldn't. I'll show you where it goes. I'm going to show you where it goes if we didn't have to pay this down. So let me draw it out first because it, it illustrates um, how, how, a good way where you can think about it more clearly. All right. So, yes. Wait for can't forget that for uh, we did the performance. How come? Like how can you debit it again? 
How come I? Hey, how can you how come on a pro form say that like, you have the, the target short term debt or uh, long term debt? When making the balance sheet adjustments? Yeah. Okay, let's let's walk through that. So let's make the adjustments. That's exactly where I'm going. And forget debits and credits for now, because they're confusing. Let's just talk about pluses and minuses. Right? What what's coming into the balance sheet and what's going out of the balance sheet. And remember, what you want to think. The way to think about this is you're first adding together, line by line, everything from cash all the way down to shareholders' equity, a quarter plus target. And what you're going to have is a combined balance sheet that balances. It must balance. If the individual balance sheets balance, the combined A plus T must balance. Yeah? And then on top of that, we're making adjustments that's related to each one of these line items. And the way the balance sheet adjustments work, and the way that this still balances, is such that each of these line items, each use and source of cash is properly reflected here. So let's tick down each line item and draw out where these adjustments should be made. Well, yes. You just use the target because it gets wiped out. Like, Sorry? You just use the target, not the priors, because like, the target gets wiped out. Because you're taking it over. Balance sheet? Yeah. No, adding everything together. No, no, I know that. I'm just saying the reason why we're just using the target, like the short from that. Because we're paying the debt down. Yeah, okay. So let's do that. Okay. <clears throat> Target short term debt. Gets removed from the balance sheet. Yeah? I'm imagining these are the assets, liabilities, and general sector. What else gets removed? The long term debt again. Okay. Target long term debt. Target cash. <clears throat> what else gets removed? It's because you're it's because you're using the cash to pay down the debt. Uh -huh. That's what, that's part of the net debt. <clears throat> what else do we remove? Target stock. Yeah. Target stockholders. Target shareholders. Equity. I'll just call it T S E, <clears throat> which is represented by the book value here. Right. We're we're paying for that book value. So that whole section goes away. Right, retained earnings, stock, everything is gone. Right, we're paying off the shareholders, so the shareholders' equity disappears. Right, we're paying off the debt, the net debt, so the components of net debt disappear. That's it. Right. But because the money that's going in based on the purchase price is higher than that book value, we need to balance it. We balance it by putting in line items for goodwill and intangible assets. And that's something that we create, that's something that we add. We add goodwill, and we add intangible assets. Right? <clears throat> what else do we add? Well, <clears throat> how do we fund all the uses. We've raised debt. So I'm going to say new debt. We've raised equity. So let's call that new stock. And that's almost all of the <coughs> transaction adjustments that we make with the exception of transaction fees. Right? Transaction fees is something um, that we make an adjustment for in the target shareholders' equity, or sorry, in the combined shareholders' equity. We remove transaction fees in the shareholders' equity. And then you have a balancing model. <clears throat>